The AMD Radeon RX 580 2040 ASP is one of the most popular graphics cards on Steam, with 0.57% of users opting for the budget card. That's potentially over 752,000 people using the 580 2048 based on Steam's monthly active users. Most people would say that the 580 is a budget 1080p gaming card, and they're probably right. It's an almost 7-year-old GPU that wasn't even a high-end card back in 2018. I remember buying a 580 in 2018 and only paying around £180 for it or $240. And then I sold it again for double the price in 2020 when crypto made GPUs extremely scarce. But when people say it's a 1080p gaming card, they're usually referring to the 8GB version. But here I have a Chinese 580-2048 with 16GB of GDDR5 memory. And I want to make it into an ultra cheap 4K gaming card. Sort of. So in the previous video, we saw that having two RX 580 16GB cards in Crossfire works quite well. When Crossfire actually works, that is. However, most newer games are not compatible. But today, we're going to test out lossless scaling's frame generation and hopefully make this 16GB graphics card into a kind of 4K gaming card by utilising the dual GPU mode. Basically, we're setting the game to use one GPU and lossless scaling to use the other GPU. Thanks to all who commented on the last video. But first, before we use two GPUs, let's try it out with a single 16GB RX 580 so we know what we're working with here. Let's connect our GPU and we can see that we have our 16GB RX 580 in GPU-Z with the somewhat slow GPU clock and memory clock speeds. In Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p at ultra settings, TEAA set to high and windowed borderless so our frame generation actually works, we get 25.2 FPS on average which is not quite ideal as we need a semi-decent FPS of around 30 to get good results from frame generation. When we turned on LSFG 3.0 with the 2x multiplier and flow scale set to 100, we saw a quite big drop in our base FPS down to 21.5 FPS on average. Obviously the frame generation needs to run off of something, so that's why we're seeing this drop here. However, we are now doubling our frames, so we now have approximately 42 FPS on average, and the game feels quite smooth and it's actually overall a very good experience. There weren't too many noticeable defects in areas with movement either. Looking at the footage in slow motion on a 120Hz monitor, it does appear to be quite smooth, or at least smoother than without frame generation, with of course some occasional defects. Turning up the frame generation to 3 times decreased the FPS a little more to 20.2 FPS, but now it gave us a generated 60 FPS. There's definitely more noticeable warping and weird stuff happening now due to the low base FPS and having extra generated frames. At 4K Ultra settings, we're getting 16.6 FPS on average, which is definitely not ideal, and turning on lossless scaling 2x with the flow scale set at 50, our base FPS drops to about 11.8 FPS, and doubling that we get about 24 FPS. Increasing the multiplier to 3x didn't have much of an effect on the base FPS, which still remained at around 11 FPS. We then had 33 for total FPS. Increasing the flow scale up to 100, our graphics card can no longer keep up, and the generated frames are no longer 3 times our base FPS. This is because we're inputting 4K frames to generate our next frames, which definitely requires a lot of compute power. 10 FPS really isn't enough to play even with frame generation, let's be honest here. You get more weird motion stuff and the game feels like it's playing slower. So we could just turn up the multiplier and turn down the flow scale and we'll get like 60 FPS. But realistically, that would just be rubbish. Basically, we need a higher base FPS in 4K. So we could turn down some of the settings, but the point is I'm trying to maximize the VRAM usage as this is a 16GB card after all. We could literally get the same results using an 8GB 580 if the memory usage is always under 8GB, which in Red Dead Redemption 2 it always seems to be. So let's connect our second GPU. This should prevent our base FPS from dropping when turning on lossless scaling because our second GPU is running all the lossless scaling stuff. In order to set this up we just need to get our main gaming graphics card and put that in the top slot. And then we put our second GPU into the second PCIe slot. Our video cable needs to be plugged into the card that's running lossless scaling, so plug that into the second GPU. Now that we're in the desktop, first turn off AMD Crossfire by going to the AMD software. We don't want that on so we may not be able to see our GPUs as separate cards. We need to be able to make the game run off of our main GPU, so we're going to search for graphics settings in the Windows Start search bar and add the game, and then we're going to change the selected graphics cards to our main graphics card in our X16 slot. In my case, both cards are 580-2048 SPs, so I just tried both and started the game up and I could listen for any annoying coil whine coming from the card under load. 
If you only see one card available for both high performance and power saving, then either upgrade to Windows 11 or go to RegEdit and add some stuff. You can check the description for that. Now we need to launch our game and make sure our second GPU is set for lossless scaling. Now in game we're getting the same base FPS as we did before, but turning on lossless scaling frame generation, we don't drop our base FPS. So the game feels very smooth at 54 or even 81 FPS at 3 times frame generation at 1080p. At 4K we're still only getting around 14 FPS, so even though we get more FPS when turning the frame generation on, the game doesn't feel great at even 42 generated FPS. So it's not looking too good for our cheap 4K gaming card. But to try and get more FPS, I'm going to swap these two cards around. While this may seem unnecessary, I'm hoping that this will give us a boost in FPS due to the fact that the Dicker Saber card, in white here, is clocked quite a bit faster and also has a faster memory clock. So using this card for the gameplay, we should get a higher FPS. And sure enough, we are getting a higher FPS. At 1080p Ultra settings, we now have 31.3 FPS instead of 25.2 FPS. We can turn on 2 times or 3 times frame generation, and the game feels great. At 4K we're also getting a higher FPS at 17.2, but this is still quite low for frame generation. It's for sure better than before, but it's still not great. If we turn down the settings to low, then we get 31.5 FPS on average at 4K, and turning on frame generation we have this game running at over 60 FPS. This is much better and a lot more playable, and the game still looks decent enough. If we want to get over 60 FPS however, we need to turn down the flow scale as our Kinology 580 cannot handle the large amounts of frame generation at 4K. So we sacrifice some of the quality for our extra frames, but the game still looks really good running at 90 FPS at 4K. However, when we turn down our settings, our VRAM usage decreased by a lot, so you could also run this with an 8GB 580 2048 SP. Let's try some other games and see if we can play them at 4K and let's also see how much video memory they use. In Forza at 1080p max settings, so I have some of the settings higher than the extreme preset, we got 33.9 FPS on average. And funnily enough we were already using over 8GB of VRAM. Turning on frame generation we were getting double and triple the FPS and the game actually felt really really smooth. Now at 4K we're only getting 14 FPS on average which is not great. We are using over 9GB of video memory. But in order to get this to a playable 4K experience, I turned down the settings of the game to the extreme preset. Now we get 22.3 FPS on average, whilst also using over 8GB of video memory. Frame generation now feels a lot better with 44 or 66 FPS at 4K. In Forza 4K gaming with the 16GB RX 580 actually seems to make sense. The game plays really well and uses well over 8GB of VRAM. Turning down the flow scale would probably be good here, but since we only have 22 FPS to begin with, we're not generating so many frames like if we had 60 base FPS and multiplied it by 3. So it seems like our Kinology 580 can handle the frame generation. It is important not to max out the card usage, because it makes the game feel worse with input delay and it just doesn't feel as smooth. Spider-Man Remastered at the very high preset at 4K gave us 23.1 FPS on average. We were using just less than 8GB of VRAM. Turning on the frame generation, the game felt much more smooth and was decent playing at over 70 FPS. Ideally, the base FPS could be a little bit higher as there were some graphical weird stuff going on due to the low base FPS. I think that the VRAM usage may creep over 8GB at certain points in the game, so the 16GB 580 does seem to be good for Spider-Man Remastered with loss of scaling. Star Wars Jedi Survivor gave us 18.7 FPS at epic settings 4K. The FPS is a bit low here, but with 2 times frame generation it was actually quite good surprisingly enough. We were getting about 40 FPS and it felt pretty smooth. At 3 times frame generation the game was smoother but had more noticeable warping stuff due to the low FPS. We were using well over 10GB of VRAM on our 580, so if we were using the 8GB card here, we would have run out of VRAM and most likely have gotten a much lower FPS. Turning down the settings to high and we were still using well over 8GB of VRAM, but we had a higher base FPS in the 23 range. This means we could get over 50 FPS or 70 FPS depending on what we turn the multiplier to. For the most part we could keep the flow scale at 100 as there weren't too many frames being generated, but at 3 or 4 times multiplier, turning it down to 50 on the flow scale gave better results as our second GPU was being used at 100% and couldn't keep up with the frame generation. As expected on GTA 5 at ultra settings, 4K without MSAA and advanced graphics, we got a decent FPS of 31.6. This is to be expected with an older game like GTA 5, and turning on frame generation was great. We could get 60 FPS by setting the flow scale to 100, and about 90 FPS or even more if we turn the flow scale down to 60. 
Flight Simulator at 4K Ultra settings wasn't very good with only 8.9 FPS on average. It was using over 8GB of VRAM, but we're going to have to turn down the settings to get this into a playable state. At low settings 4K, the game was much better at 23.5 FPS. Our VRAM usage did drop down to about 6GB however. Frame generation here was pretty decent, but you could do the exact same thing with a 580 8GB card. Resident Evil 3 at max settings 4K was using well over 9GB of video memory, and better yet, the game was actually playable with 27FPS on average. This did also dip into the 30FPS range at many times, so it seems like the 580 16GB card is a pretty good match for this game. Turning on frame generation, we get into the 60s and 90FPS range, depending on the multiplier of course, but if we do turn the multiplier up to 3x and above, we need to turn down that flow scale because our second GPU cannot handle it as it's at 100% usage which causes the experience to be worse. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p highest settings gives us 61 FPS on average and about 120 FPS with the 2x multiplier or even higher if we increase the multiplier of course. At 4K our base FPS drops to 21 but it's still playable and turning on frame generation we can get 42 or 63 FPS using the 2 or 3 times multiplier. We were using just less than 8GB of video memory, so it may be possible to achieve these results with an 8GB card, but it's probably good to have the 16GB card, and then you have more room in case the game does dip over that 8GB range. When we did Crossfire on this game with the exact same cards, we achieved 34.4fps on average, but with frame generation we can get upwards of 60 or 80fps or even more. Obviously these aren't actually real frames, but generated frames instead, so they won't ever look as good, but frame generation has one real big advantage over Crossfire. Apart from the fact that Crossfire is dead, which is probably a pretty big reason too. You can use any two GPUs you like with frame generation. They don't have to be the same series, brand, or even the same memory size. You can pair an Nvidia card with an AMD card, and you can use an 8GB card with a 4GB card. So while you can pair differing memory sizes in Crossfire, you will only get the memory of the smallest of the two cards due to how Crossfire works. With loss of scaling on the other hand, you can use any amount and the GPU memory is not split. If you noticed before, loss of scaling running on our second GPU never used really any more than 4GB of VRAM, so having a more expensive 16GB 580 to run frame generation isn't even needed. Just to check, I tried running loss of scaling with the same GPU for running our games, but this time I used a 4GB RX 470 for our frame generation, and the results were pretty much the same. There is a good chance that my second GPU is probably being bottlenecked due to the X4 slot. It's PCIe 4.0, so capable of 8GB per second on the X4. But unfortunately, these old RX 580 cards only support PCIe 3.0, so the maximum is therefore half that at 4GB per second. Additionally, it's also PCIe through the chipset. While it would have been great to test it using PCIe X8 or even X16 to make sure that there are no bottlenecks, Motherboards with two real PCIe X8 slots are pretty hard to come by, and they tend to cost quite a bit. I don't think someone who's got like $400 to spend on a motherboard is going to be buying a 16GB 580 and trying to play 4K games on it. So is the RX 580 16GB now a 4K gaming card? Well I guess it's possible, but frame generation will never be as good as running the game natively. You get occasional glitches and noticeable warping. Even stuff like DLSS and FSR frame generation will be better because they can go into the game mechanics to generate more accurate motion, but they do require the game to actually have it implemented and your graphics card has to be compatible. AMD FSR isn't officially compatible with the older 500 series cards, but I have seen it working. So loss of scaling is definitely great for playing any game using any card or even dual cards with frame generation and upscaling. It can also upscale so you could just play the game at 1080p and upscale it to 4k with some frame generation and you could quite easily get a really good experience. It's just really down to the end user and you can mess around with the settings until you find your optimal gaming experience. Lossless scaling's frame generation is indeed very good and the fact that you can run it on separate cards is awesome. Some people have called it the new SLI or Crossfire and I'd have to agree that it's probably the best option for dual GPU gaming currently. Thanks for watching.